48 seconds of logos. I had a vision in Amityville. You may remember it. It was basically a trailer for this movie. I had a premonition of your death. Previously on, checks notes, the Amityville Conjuring? Or maybe this is Annabelle forever. I really can't keep up anymore. Who's that? Looks like crackhead Bonnie found the lore. Good for her. I always wondered what happened to her after the fighter. So wait, you couldn't just put 1952 on the screen like every other asshole does? What's with the complete sentences? Just making sure we got enough crosses for you. You mean for the hallway scene? No, I want so many crosses the sisters won't even be able to walk down the hallway without having to inconveniently shimmy sham around them. Let's have a bunch hanging from the ceiling as well. And 12 fog machines! Turn to the max setting. We're gonna horror cliche this sh up right. You saw me making the right decision. We have no other choice. Except you totally do. You could jump on the next bus out of St. Carta and not look back, but horror movies got a horror. Will the relic truly save us? Damn, how bad must your faith be if you're relying on a Peter Himes movie 45 years into the future to save you? Are you hoping the time cop is real and that it'll crash to 1952 like a sound of thunder before the end of days and your sudden death? Stay tuned because I have a feeling that won't happen until 2010 and even then by a narrow margin. Take it! This evil needs a vessel to escape. The problem with stuff like this is you have no idea what this nun did to get the key in the first place and why the evil presence allowed her to get this far and give instructions to her buddy before it decides to yank her back into the evil room. The not even God. Must retire this jump scare from all horror movies. Forgive me, Father. You're the same I'm about to commit. Wait, does God work like some sort of benevolent minority report where you can ask forgiveness before you commit a sin? Hello, Absolution Crime Tour 2019, baby. Also, does Sister Victoria really have to kill herself? Once she dies, the demon has no power to leave the Abbey. So why wouldn't a simple escape work? Why not have a bunch of mattresses waiting on the steps and jump to safety with the key and get the hell out of Dodge? Also, also, this key opens up a secret room with a glorified snow globe full of Jesus Christ's blood in it. Maybe she should have left some instructions in a backstory? Instead, this is going to require a psychic girl to figure it out while Valak with whomever the Vatican sends to solve the mystery. Sure, move slowly. It's not like she's got a rope around her neck and about to jump, but I have no clue if that even matters, because all I've seen so far is a couple of nuns that make poor decisions and a key. If you could scan her shut the window, why not just do that before the sister jumped? Oh, God. Man, this body sure has amazing dramatic timing. Since it is a cloistered convent and your access will be limited. But aren't you the Vatican? Can't you tell them to give this guy all the access? In case you confused it with London, Ohio, which according to my records, is a thing. My only hope now was that the beast could not smell me. But then the wind changed. This chick is belling so hard here, it almost feels like they just took the Beauty and the Beast set up and threw a nun in the castle instead of a beast. Also, holy sh they digitally young and Vera Farmiga. Wait a minute, this is her much younger sister? But by the end of this movie, she has no connection to Lorraine Warren. Unless they're going to soap opera this thing and tell us that she is Lorraine Warren and she used to be a nun and she got amnesia exercising a talking teacup. Apparently, periodic tables in 1952 only recognized 13 elements. Of course, this is a Catholic school, so they might have considered stuff like carbon and hydrogen sinful. And don't even get me started on sodium. The Bible is... God's love letter to us. I'm a fan of my love letters being filled with brutal killings and incest, so good to know that this was the intention all along. I'd never been in that part of the world. There must have been some mistake. Every decision the Vatican makes is with purpose. There is a purpose, but why would they lie about Irene having experience in Romania? And isn't lying a sin? Lying is a sin. Ah, sudden shining blood stairs. Nah, my friends, you're in the dark ages. The joke is that they think Frenchie drives this truck, so they put their suitcases on the back of it. And then the truck drives off and reveals that Frenchie actually drives this horse-drawn carriage. And look, I know we can't see where this guy went, but they sure as hell could, so I'm having trouble buying this And who makes this kind of assumption without asking the driver if that's his vehicle or not? I guess, instinctively, the truck driver knows this whistle was meant for him? The postman's charge. Ten letters with an L. While there is a clue on this crossword that is ten letters with an L that goes across, Father Burke is clearly pointing at a word that is going down and does not fit the parameters. The horse won't go any further. Locals say it's a cursed place. Well, the horse agrees. So, when we were first introduced to Frenchie, he was merrily riding his horse toward the abbey to deliver produce. And while we never saw the horse anywhere near him during that scene, I'm pretty sure they made this we-have-to-walk part up just for this. Whether the movie was lying to us or not about the horse, how could he have gotten the cart full of supplies over this bridge? You see this cart? How is that getting over this? At the very least, his pants and shoes would be wet from crossing the stream, right? Not to mention the difficulty of carrying that thing through the obstacle course of crosses before he even got to the bridge. When I found the sister, I thought maybe moving her in here would help preserve her. Wait, what? The sister's body is still there? So the authorities took the time to contact the Vatican, but didn't move the body to the morgue or conduct an investigation? That's not how I left her. Yeah, spooky, but why the f*** would the demon do that for any reason whatsoever? There have been cases of body switching or Sitting up, not long after death. There have been a lot of cases of bodies blah 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 after death cliche. Yeah, but father, who knows how long she was dead when I found her? 
You're not helping. Wouldn't say you are either, father. With your weird ass dead bodies can sit up by themselves theory. We should give her a proper burial. They haven't even checked the convent to see if there are any other nuns around, or if maybe one of them wants to join them in putting their sister to rest. The character logic is maddening, even for a horror movie. I'm pretty sure that of the first 20 minutes of this film, half of it has been characters carrying luggage. And no one has cleaned this up. Seriously, how do they believe for a second this f***ing place is inhabited by anything other than demon nuns? Hope you like slow walking and staring because that's pretty much the rest of this movie. Are you the Reverend Mother? You know, that it's a demon, right? This is supposed to be the one thing you're f***ing good at. The Vatican needs to vet its supernatural enforcer applicants a little better in the future. I'm afraid that won't suffice. They will just send more and, um... Uh perhaps less diplomatic church officials. Now that Father Burke realizes the nuns didn't even know the sister was missing, much less dead, why is he waiting to have reinforcements brought in? This place probably needs to be shut down. It's pretty clear this isn't a safe work environment. There is lodging in the convent. You may stay there. But why not just kill these people now? F***ing demons in their timetables that just start with random f***ery. I know Poltergeist is a great movie, but god damn you, Poltergeist. We'll be fine, son. Come back in a few days. That should give us enough time to get what we need. But no reason to be more specific about your time frame. Frenchie is just your only way out of this f***ing place. It's not like he's important or anything. Also, I know these nuns get their food delivered, but what if they need to get somewhere like a hospital? Not like they can hail a cab. I'm sure these types of places exist, but there has to be some sort of transportation for getting out as well as getting in. This ghost nun goes through a ton of shit to set up what amounts to a jump scare. She shows up here and walks away, appears again dragging a noose behind her, then nearly a full minute later recreates a hanging, complete with the rope breaking and going in for a scary yet fruitless attack. After one last foggy scare appearance, the nun disappears. I've never had less fun jerking off to a scene in my life. <laughs> Tag, you're it. For a movie called The Nun, I'm seeing a lot of demonic but not really seeing the nun, and she's f***ing scary. She's what this movie was sold on. And of course, she's in the room with the picture of Sister Charlotte from Annabelle 2. Easter eggs are fun and all, but this just reminds me of a much better movie that I would much rather be watching now. You mentioned miracle hunting before. Is that a role you sought out? No. God, no. Originally, I wanted to be a crossword champion, but you can clearly see I suck at that, so miracle hunting it was. While this crossword puzzle now has deliveries written in after Irene answered the 10-letter clue with an L, this is in no way the same puzzle he was working on. Also, the clue for deliveries is simply transferals, and nothing involving the postman. I guess it could be a new crossword from a completely different paper, and it's a coincidence, but f*** you. I had a series of visions when I was a girl. Of course you did. I would take a sin off if one of these supernatural movies didn't have a character with visions. This is probably the first point addressed in Lazy Screenplay Writing 101. Can't figure out how to explain what a demon wants? No problem. Throw a character who sees in the mix and they can exposition away. But word of my visions reached the church. Cardinal Conroy specifically, and he sent Bishop Form to meet with me. Why didn't the Vatican just tell Father Burke they were sending a woman who has visions with him rather than the whole she knows Romania story? Maybe he wouldn't have believed them, but they are the Vatican, right? The hell they care if he believed them or not. After each one ended, the same thought would be stuck in my head. Mary points the way. So each of your visions, which you just said were all different, gave you the same message, which ties directly into this very specific mission later in the movie? Or do you spend your remaining days on Earth finding Mary statues pointing at key places all around the world? <laughs> Goddamn demons always pick the jazz channel. Also, I've seen this horror trope so many times now that I bet you could make a 5 CD collection called Horror Cliché Rock, complete with a minute-long commercial of scrolling songs filled with stuff like Jeepers Creepers, Tiptoe Through the Tulips, and so much more. Also, I'm a demonic presence that could do anything I want. Should I just rip the throats out of Father Burke and Sister Irene when they sleep and be done with them? Nah, I'll turn on this radio and make them wonder how it happened. That seems like way more fun. Don't mind me, Father, I'm just trying to find a men's bathroom in this convent. It's goddamn impossible. Inexplicable section of the convent full of bedsheets hanging from the ceiling. Tag, you're it. Parcel tongue. Also, I thought this movie was called The Nun, not The Boy, or whatever the f this kid is. Why does the demon bother throwing Father Burke into an open grave and bury him completely under magically appearing ground? Even picking out a personalized tombstone, only to put him in the grave with one of those I'm alive bells so that someone can save him. Just do something for once. This is what happens not too long after your vows of celibacy. So she heard the bell ring and she's gonna save Father Burke. Awesome. My question is, why is she even out here? She felt a f***ing breeze, and this led to her walking outside to find Burke. How, exactly? Sure, this is an effective way of making sure that no one can figure out which grave is Father Burke's, but then you could have simply not provided a tombstone that read, Here Lies Father Burke, or declined to put a bell on it in the first place. I know people are genuinely frightened of stuff like this, but afterwards, Father Burke won't be injured, dead, or psychologically changed from this experience. These scares are biochemically no different than eating large quantities of chocolate, to quote my favorite Satan. Maybe those books will help shine a light on our answer. Or you could, and I'm just spitballing here, get the f*** out of there! 
Also, so you mean the evil presence threw you into an open grave that it knew you might escape, and there just happened to be a coffin with all these handy books lying around in said grave once you were free? By the way, none of this was in your coffin while you were ringing the bell and getting strangled by discount Brad Door. There's more of it. How is that possible? Another puzzle. It's a really stupid puzzle, though. And it's yet another puzzle that goes unsolved in this movie. And I'm sure an Annabelle witch doctor, Devil Christ, will find out that the extra blood is from Elise Rayner when she's time travel ghost hunting in the extended further universe. Also, is Sister Irene just not going to share her experiences the previous night with disappearing nuns and broken mirrors? That might be relevant before they go back to the convent. Because I guess the slaughtered lamb was taken. Why did Adi Constantine's crop turn to dust? Why was little Stefan struck blind? Another giant failing of the movie is that the surrounding town is being affected by the evil presence at the Abbey, but all of it is told to us secondhand by some bartender. We don't know any of these characters he's talking about or care about this town at all, thereby reducing the impact of this demon's presence. Can you tell me about the history of this Abbey? It was built by a duke. He wrote countless texts on witchcraft and rituals, in which to call upon the forces of hell. And now we call it home. They sealed the gateway using an ancient relic containing the blood of Jesus Christ. We put in a bid on eBay and we stuck it to the Southern Baptists once and for all. And look at this, it's a certificate of authenticity signed by Jehovah himself. Evil was kept at bay until the bombs of war shook the abbey and evil found another way to open the gateway. Oh, come on. If it was this easy for demons to spring out of the ground, they'd do it every time there was an earthquake or something. The Archduke who built this place should have just grabbed a shovel and dug for a really long time rather than building an entire castle complete with a sealed floor that required black magic for a demon to burst through. Also, what kind of target is an abbey out in the middle of nowhere in Romania. It takes on different forms to deceive us and prey on our weaknesses. This nun talking to Irene is just a vision that died long ago, but the ultimate confusion in this movie is whether Valak is responsible for this vision or if Irene is. It makes little sense that Valak would provide visions of helpful nuns to tell Irene important things to help her beat him, but it's even more puzzling that Irene wouldn't recognize these nuns as visions unless Valak was responsible for them. After admittedly just a vision Sister Oana told us about the nun being sneaky, becoming whatever form she wants as a means to an uncertain end, how does this factor into the plan? When you analyze the jump scares in this movie, they only serve the audience, and not one bit of the story. Freddy Krueger might as well show up. Totally weird to wake up and see a person in your room that wasn't there before, but what's even weirder is sleeping with your shoes still on. Also, sudden nuns! Crosses turning! Ex-skipping? Oh god. This would be 100% more effective and maybe even scary if we knew how Irene got to this point of discovery, or maybe a little bit about what the nun is trying to accomplish. There are literally no f***ing stakes in this movie, other than Irene and Burke might die, and I'm not even sure if I care at this point whether or not that happens. <laughs> Jesus, why did the nun even shut the door in the first place? She had the key to the relic in her grasp. What was preventing her from getting it? Now I'm totally confused. Is the nun confined behind this door or not? At one point she's all over the convent spreading her evil. At another, she's blocked by a door and can't even steal a key. The evil grows stronger. Rumor has it that the evil can now do 665 squats. One more and we're Get your things and meet me in the chapel, sister. Only prayer will get us through the night. But make sure you get your things. Can't pray without your things. Father Burke is one of those characters in movies that is propped up as one of the movie's heroes. But nothing he's done makes us think that he'll have the answer in the end. Here he is, incautiously chasing after a mysterious nun into a confessional shortly after being attacked. Not to mention being buried alive. And his lack of awareness is stunning. Also, if the nun you chased was in there, what was the plan once the curtains are opened? Are you gonna say boo and play it all off as a joke? This f***ing movie. So, you're looking to join a church. Here are five warning signs. Sister Alana. While this dead nun is just a vision, it does remind us that the demon killed all the nuns before Irene and Burke got here. But it's having a devil of a time killing them for some reason. Do you? Dude, last time you did this, you ended up in a coffin, ringing a bell and getting attacked by, I don't know, Ebenezer Scrooge, the one who didn't pay attention to the ghosts of Christmas timelines. Yeah, Ebenezer Scrooge showed up in this movie, I don't remember why. Why would you help me? What is Valak's endgame here? Using Daniel to freak out Father Burke serves zero purpose. In horror movie theory it does, because the demon is trying to weaken its human subject through psychological curry. But I'm beginning to think horror movies need to start putting a threat level meter on the screen that shows us the demon's progress, so that we know when to be upset about it. Don't you think we should have the nun actually do something to these people? Nah, man, having her just stare at them would be way scarier. I officially think the demon is changing this crossword puzzle now, because this is the third iteration of it. Let's go back to the last time we saw it. Father Burke had answered one of the clues, leg man, for a reporter in action. But now that answer is gone. He had answered taxi for part of the city fleet, and that's gone. And deliveries is written differently. They really had a hard time with the crossword puzzle continuity in this flick, didn't they? <laughs> one, I finally discovered something that can crack the case. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Ooh, ringy bell. Also, what's hilarious about this revelation about the delivery room being important is that the movie never goes back to it. It's just a reason for the demon to play more stupid tricks. 
Frenchie Ex Machina in one of the Ex Machiniest Ex Machinas ever machina. He had to have literally just gotten here, heard screaming in the deliveries room, and came in like the woodsman from the Little Red Riding Hood to save the day. But please, by all means, next time, do use the shotgun. I'm saving that for emergencies, father. Well, what the f*** was that, if not an emergency? Nun Demon prefers arts and crafts to killing. If the nuns around this place have been visions the whole time, then why did they suddenly stop? Is it because the two people who don't have visions walked into the room? Also, remember this scene earlier when Irene came in and rudely interrupted the praying nun? The movie was very adamant about showing her face after Irene left, as if Irene was having visions in some sort of bizarre cinematic way for the purpose of an unseen audience. The bullet stopped this paranormal demon on fire in its tracks, which is a sin. Also, why does Valak stop with all the illusions now? Why did the previous actions we just saw change his MO at all? For the demon to enter our world. It must possess a human soul. Then why hasn't it already? I'm just saying maybe do more possessing and less pretending to be Daniel, and the plan might actually get carried out. It wasn't suicide. It was a sacrifice. Dun dun dun! Oh yeah, not surprised at all. I was so far ahead of this movie, I'm pretty sure I've already seen The Nun 3, Nuns on the Run. You're going to love how they tie Robbie Coltrane and Eric Idle into this franchise. Did your sisters tell you what it is? You mean the nuns that have been dead the whole time? Yeah, I'm sure they said a lot. I received the vows you have taken. By the way, does anyone know a five-letter word for beetle larva? This has been killing me. Also, movie has time for this. It could have just as easily made Irene a full-fledged nun from the very beginning. What did this movie gain by making her a novitiate this whole time? There were no consequences to that. Mary points away. A statue points to an important place and turns the movie into a discount Da Vinci Code cliche. I feel like this movie was pitched with the idea of mixing As Above, So Below with Indiana Jones. But then someone pointed out that As Above, So Below was already that same movie. And then someone else said, let's just throw an evil nun into the mix. There's a time for prayer and a time for action, son. Now is the time for action. Awesome. And with a whole 19 minutes left in the movie. We need to search everywhere to find the gateway. But you don't have to split up, do you? I mean, that just doesn't seem smart. But welcome to the plot of the nun. No face, none. Won't you come and sneak up on a ring? No face, none. Won't you come? Won't you come? The nun sets up this perfectly good scare where a decoy nun follows Sister Irene down the hallway, then unexpectedly attacks from another direction. But all it leads to is a bunch of screaming and maybe a sprained back. But little else, and I'm exhausted. So do these ghosts just set this up in advance, just on the off chance someone comes searching around the catacombs? Do they have to make sure they have some fun scare tactics ready to go in all rooms? Is there a ghost union? It's frustrating that some of the images in this would actually be scary in some other way better movie. But the nun has set up empty scare after empty scare, and this is just filler. Protect us from evil with your holy life! But now, Father Burke, you don't have a lantern to walk around in the dark with anymore. How are you going to make it through these catacombs now? Couldn't God have stopped the demons without you giving up your lantern? I know that's supposed to be scary, but honestly, this just feels like a failed Listerine commercial. You failed. Just as you failed everyone in your life. If we knew anything about Frenchie's character, these words might have some impact. But we don't, and this is even more empty bullshit. Also, the movie has a scary as hell nun at the center of it. But sure, let's just waste time with Sister Irene in demon makeup instead. Why would she need a gun? She's a f***ing demon. Irene's plan is to put Jesus' blood in her mouth, fake die when the nun chokes her out, then be in a position to spit blood on her face when she inevitably checks Irene's supposedly lifeless body. Not only does Irene leave a ton to chance here, but how does Valak not know when a human is dead or not? Seriously, Marilyn Manson not suing for likeness rights was a missed opportunity for all of us. Sister Irene somehow survives all this. I hope you don't mind. It's called the kiss of life. And as a small town guy who delivers produce to nuns for a living, I just naturally know this technique because you pick some things up when you f as much as I do. Frenchie rubs his neck, and the movie reveals that Valak actually possessed him while they were battling the demon. But that takes all the thunder out of this scene with Valak sinking into the floor and being sealed underneath. What does this scene even mean anymore if Frenchie got possessed anyway? That the Jesus blood was effective, but it has glaring weaknesses? Also, so now you're just saying that Valak possessed Frenchie just before Irene supposedly banished him with the blood of Jesus? That is some incredible insight and makes zero f***ing sense. If the demon possessed Frenchie before it died, then why did Frenchie continue to help out and give Irene CPR afterwards? Why did the demon, while it was the nun, freak out when Irene spat blood on her and melted into the floor? If it was inside Frenchie and not inside the nun. Take Maurice Tiero. His friends called him Frenchie. Well, this is a nice callback to The Conjuring. Ed Warren did not tell the class that his friends called him Frenchie in that movie at all. An upside down cross started to appear from within his body. And in The Conjuring, this is where their film strip ended. But in The Nun, the film continues while the Warrens keep talking. If you're going to make a callback movie, you better get the details right. But what does it matter? This movie sucks anyway. No tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Hello? Who approaches the bridge of death must answer me these questions three. 
Uh, the other side, he see. Uh, football practice. I just want to hang out. No big deal. You won't find another way in, Father. Reach with goes of the Gothian, goes of the Destructor. Volga Sildroha, the Traveler, has come. <laughs> it's too late, Father. Sister Irene is lost. Right.